Hey folks, Dale Davidson here, the Dear VA Guy. Thank you for being here today. Been getting a lot of questions about special monthly compensation, yes, SMC, and then do I qualify for that? And can I get aid and attendance in addition to my disability comp? You know, what or my compensation? Uh, what exactly can I get? So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So let's dive in. Special monthly compensation, and I'm going to refer to it as SMC for short, is authorized by statute, okay, under certain circumstances in addition to your service connected disability. Remember, you've got to have the service, you've got to have some kind of nexus between your disability or your injury and your service in order to qualify. So, SMC is basically an amount of money that the government pays to you because you have suffered or the veteran has suffered some kind of anatomical service-connected disability. God forbid you stepped on a IED in Afghanistan or Iraq or whatever and you're missing a, a limb, a foot, hand, arm, whatever it may be. Okay, You've lost an eye or both eyes or maybe because of your injuries that you are permanently bedridden are so, and they call it, so helpless as to be in need of regular aid and attendance, okay? And then we're going to look at those regular aid and attendance criteria here uh, in just a minute. So, permanently bedridden, missing some kind of limb, or you are so helpless that you absolutely need more help than your compensation is able to, you can afford with your basic compensation. So, what is your need for aid and attendance? Now, remember, aid and attendance is generally a pension for veterans who are honorably discharged, who have a medical issue, and who meet certain income and asset criteria. But under this SMC, the income and asset criteria kind of go out the door. What we're looking at now is your activities of daily living. Can you perform anything feeding yourself? Can you feed yourself? Can you dress yourself? Can you undress yourself? Can you button buttons, zip zippers, okay? Can you prepare food? And let me tell you what, preparing food is not just open up a hungry man's dinner. Those things are nasty, by the way. Or a can of soup. It's planning, going to the grocery store, picking up the food, bringing it home, putting it up, cooking it, cleaning up, all of those things that are involved in food preparation. Can you do that? Well, if you are permanently bedridden, you've got to have somebody to do that, right? Or if you're so helpless, maybe you can't stand by a hot stove and cook. Maybe because of a lost limb or, or eye or whatever it may be that you have issues with respect to having to to cook and maybe you can't drive that's part of it all right so even though you may have some kind of uh, artificial limb that helps you you know you still need more help than as usual so what we're looking at here is extreme weakness okay loss of coordination you know, if you're missing a limb, uh, I know you go through rehab and, and can get some of that back, but you still have some loss of coordination. You know, you have an incapacity, whether it be physically or mentally, to care for yourself, okay, on a regular basis. So this aid and attendance, you need this aid and attendance to, in effect, pay somebody to take care of you because you have more needs than regularly because of your your disability. So we talked about activities of daily living such as eating, bathing, dressing, preparing food, there's medication management, there's paying your bills, all of those things are activities of daily living that you need assistance with. So you don't have to have all of these disabling conditions like inability to feed yourself, preparing your own meals, bathing, dressing yourself, 
uh, medication management, financial management. You don't have to have all those, but as a general rule, you're going to have at least two of five activities of daily living that you need assistance with. The VA is looking at your particular functions that you cannot perform in connection with the whole picture here. Maybe you're not bedridden, but you have a, uh, a traumatic brain injury, a TBI, such that you have seizures so you can't drive. So maybe preparing meals is, is out. If you have a TBI, maybe there's some PTSD, paranoia type behaviors in there. You can't be outside of your home. Well, you gotta have somebody to go pick up all your medications. So there's a lot that goes into the determination of what are your particular functions and how how is that impacting your life and why they are impacting your life in such a way that you need this aid and attendance. So they look at it whole. There's basically two rates. Okay, there's uh, the additional allowance, they call it R1 rate, which is about $8,900 for a single veteran. And if you have a veteran and a dependent, that's about $9,700. Then they have an R2 rate, which R2 is more severe. So the R2 rate is um, it's about 10,000 for a, a single veteran and about $10,900 for a veteran, I think is what it is. R1 is, I mean, you've got some issues. R2, you've got some really significant issues. And so you get a, a higher rate. Remember though that uh, with respect to an R1 rate, your spouse or your partner's taking care of you, right? But if you have more significant issues that you need the R2 rate, then they're going to be looking to say, okay, you're being overseen by a licensed healthcare professional. So maybe this is some kind of home health uh, business that's coming in and, and helping you on a daily basis to, again, bathe, shower, toilet, whatever you got to do uh, in order for you to conduct your activities of daily living. So let's look at your residuals. Is your need for SMC tied to your residuals? And what are residuals? Okay. The best way that I can I can explain this is so the Veterans Board of Appeals in a in a case found that the special monthly compensation provided by law is valid in that in, in this particular case again, they, because they talked about a TBI, tra traumatic brain injury, that he was so impacted by this brain injury, and I think it happened in a, in a combat-related stressor. Although he didn't require hospitalization or didn't require uh, to be in a nursing home, he nonetheless required a protected environment, but he required a level of medical care that his spouse could not provide. Again, they rated him for the, or gave him, awarded him the R2 rate. So the residuals, what what's occurring in your life in order to require or allow the VA to award you either the R1 or R2 rating? In that case, the VA said, well, the R1 rating didn't apply, but the R2 rating applied because of the TBI and because he needed significant medical attention on a daily basis. So didn't require to be in a nursing home, but required more attention than a spouse or partner could give. So essentially this type of SMC uh, is, is warranted for veterans like yourself who need regular aid and attendance for in-service connected residuals, may require hospitalization, nursing home, or other residential institutional care in the absence of aid and attendance. So, I mean, you need to basically need to be in a protected environment. Ask yourself this, who is your caregiver? Your spouse or partner? If that's the case, then you're more likely to be approved for R1 
But if you need that higher level of care by a licensed health care provider, you're at hour two. Question, have you or have you currently applied for the Comprehensive Caregiver Assistance, Family Caregiver Program? Who's acting as your primary caregiver if you have under that program? So we're looking to see who's taking care of you, spouse, partner, or health care provider. What kind of assistance do you need? Do you need assistance bathing, grooming, dressing? Well, Dale, I got a shower. I can just walk in. Okay, you have grab bars? Yeah, well, I mean, so apparently you might be unsteady on your feet, so you have to have a grab bar or have a sit down shower. Clearly, you need assistance bathing because you have to have some kind of mechanical means in your bathroom. Okay, same way with toileting. What about preparing meals? Well, I have a TBI, I can't drive. Well, then you've got to have somebody go out and buy your groceries, bring them back, and prepare everything for you. So you've got the activities of daily living. You've met those criteria, but you know, what, what exactly do you need? And that's where we get, again, our medical evidence is going to tell us that, yes, you need help bathing, you need help mobility, getting in and out of chairs, you need to get one of those lift chairs, whatever it may be, that medical evidence is going to tell us what your residuals are as far as your compensation claim. Just like the TBI example that we had uh, a little bit earlier. So what does your caregiver do to help you with your activities of daily living? Do they help you with the medication? What about, do you have to have medical equipment, like a, a lift? Do you have to have some kind of special chair to get out? What about driving? I mean, you may be handicapped, but do you have to have a special vehicle with special ad adaptations so you can drive? What about personal hygiene, dressing, managing and financing, meals, all of that? What does anyone else assist you with? Answer that question, okay? What do your treatment records show? What's your level of impairment? Does the evidence show that you only require limited assistance? Well, if you require just limited assistance, why do you need aid in attendance? This is only for folks who have moderate to severe needs for assistance, okay? So again, are you bedridden? That's a need but if you're not bedridden then we got to figure out is that just a moderate need or is that a severe need for assistance okay has your condition somewhat resolved yourself resolved itself I mean is it being well controlled all of that goes into the to the mix okay did you have an examination did the VA give you an examination for housebound status and aid in attendance if they didn't, should we go ahead and get one done? Okay. Uh, again, we're looking at ADLs, feeding yourself, manage your financial affairs, medication management. You don't need to be in a nursing home. No, and by the way, nobody wants to be in a nursing home, but you require to be in a protected environment. You may be a fall risk. You may have, God forbid, suicidal thoughts, and you need to have somebody there to make sure they're monitoring that. The VA is gonna take all of this evidence that we are going to provide and you're gonna provide, they're gonna have doctor's notes and, and all that stuff and they're gonna put it in a big pot and they're gonna review all of this evidence and hopefully reserve, re resolve any doubt in the evidence in your favor. But at the same time, we need to make sure that that evidence reflects that you've lived with your spouse partner and you require personal assistance from others or maybe you don't have a spouse partner but you require medical assistance from others occasional assistance is not enough we're talking about everyday activities of daily living so your spouse your partner must consistently attend to your activities of daily living uh, if you're being uh, cared for by a uh, home health, you know, those professionals, licensed professionals 
must consistently attend to your activities of daily living. That's the key to this SMC award is your ADL needs must be consistently attended to on a daily basis in order for you to qualify. Hey folks, thank you for watching. Hey, got this video on aid and attendance. Now realize there's two different videos. This one deals with aid and attendance and has income and asset tests. What we talked about today does not. You have any questions regarding this, give us a shout. Until next time, be blessed.